I've built a pedal board just for a Fender Super Reverb. Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett. Welcome to the channel and this video on my custom pedal board that I assembled to work with a Fender Super Reverb. If you haven't seen the series that I'm doing before, the idea came from the fact that uh, doing gear reviews, I wound up with an awful lot of pedals and found that the pedal board I was using was just neglecting a lot of great pedals. Some of my favorites that just didn't fit on the board or just wasn't what I was into at the time. But I also found that Certain pedals work better with certain amps, certain rigs and things. And so I decided to start assembling boards that are tailored to individual amplifiers. Now, the silly thing about this is that it's obviously not just for a super reverb. In fact, the pedal boards that I've put together for the other amps that I've done, which I've done the, uh, the Super O Delta King 12, I've done the Fender Blues Junior, I've done the Fender Princeton Reverb, I've put one together for my Marshall. I use those boards with a lot of different amps and they sound great. You know, they're not really exclusive, but they are put together with the specific amplifier in mind. Now the amplifier that I'm playing here is a modern 65 reissue. It's not the Tone Master, it's the tube version, but this is a modern iteration of the Super Reverb. This is not a vintage one, it's not an old silver face one or anything like that. This is the one that you would buy in the store today. So without further ado, let's take a look at what we have here. First of all, I do have a Korg Pitch Black pedal tuner on there. Get that out of the way. I'm going to start off with a Dunlop Crybaby. Now, this is the pedal that I actually won as part of the Blues Masters package, but uh, it, it's just a straight up Dunlop Crybaby and it just works. It sounds great. <laughs> Next, we're going to move on to a fuzz, and next up, we have the Wampler Velvet Fuzz. Now, this is kind of a unique fuzz, but it's also in the uh, in the vein of the fuzz face. Fuzz can be a little tricky with the Super Reverb because it's such a big and bassy amplifier, and this one really works. It has a smoothness to it. It can sound almost like an overdrive at time. It does the clean up thing really well, like you would hope a fuzz face would. Now, 
I tend to run this on the tight mode. My favorite mode with this pedal is actually the big mode, but I find the tight mode not only works better with this amplifier, but it also works better when I play it in conjunction with some of the other pedals on the board. <laughs> Now we're gonna scoot right along to a Keeley Katana Mini. Now this I actually tend to have as an always on pedal and I don't really use it to boost it that much. I have it a little bit louder than Unity, but the Keeley Katana Mini does this really cool thing to the tone where it kind of glues the notes together. It makes the tone sound more unified, but without sounding like it's got a compressor on. So you'll hear it's a subtle difference, but it, to me it makes a big difference playing-wise. It just sounds great, and I think the other pedals interact with each other better with this pedal on. Now for my light gain overdrive, we have the Vic Audio Mount Pleasant. Now this is a blues breaker style overdrive, and as many of you might know, Vic Audio did just close their doors. They're no longer in business. However, there are a number of great blues breaker overdrives that could fit in this spot if you're someone who's looking at emulating this board or kind of picking up ideas. You can still get some Mount Pleasants kicking around used, or you could use another blues breaker style overdrive in its place. Nevertheless, this is an amp that I love and a pedal that I love. I had Mike build it for me in this custom blue enclosure, and the pairing just works perfectly. <laughs> Next up for my regular level overdrive, we have the Jam Pedals Lucy Dreamer. This is kind of like a Tube Screamer. Now, there is something a little bit non-objective about me having this pedal on the board. It does sound really good, as you'll hear, but this amp I got right after my daughter Lucy was born, and my wife got me this pedal because it's called the Lucy Dreamer. So I thought, well, I need a Tube Screamer on the board anyway. This one sounds good. I gotta pair these two together. So we do have the Lucy Dreamer. Now, I don't really use the second boost switch, which kind of kicks it into like a higher gain territory. The cool thing about this one that does work really well with the Super Reverb is that it has the mix knob. It's like a wet dry for an overdrive. So depending on what level of gain you want to come through, that really works with this amplifier, which can actually be a little finicky about its overdrive. So let's have a listen to that. Now we're going to get into some modulation territory. Next up, I have the Surfy Industries Surfy Trem. Now this one I am using on brown face mode, which is a harmonic tremolo. Obviously the Super Reverb has its own built-in tremolo. The cool thing though is that, kind of like I did on my uh, Fender Princeton board, is 
if I don't have the foot switch with me, I, I tend to take the two button foot switch with me, but if for some reason I don't have one or something's going on, I can always flip this over to regular tremolo mode, which regular tremolo I do use a fair amount, but the the brown face mode, that harmonic trem, kind of satisfies the urge of having something in that like univibe or phaser territory, and it just has this really nice kind of swell to it, creates that cool modulated tone, really great sounding pedal. <laughs> Now I have one more modulation pedal on here, and that is the Keeley Seafoam Plus Chorus. I'm not much of a chorus person, and to be perfectly honest, I originally wanted to use this pedal for kind of that slightly slow detuning effect, like uh, inspired by a Bill Frizzell kind of sound for my clean tones, but what I actually wound up using it for that it does really well is this kind of pseudo Leslie thing. I love Leslie tones with a guitar, but one of the problems is a lot of Leslie pedals don't have a wet-dry knob. You ever notice that? There are a lot of great Leslie emulator pedals out there that don't have that blend, so it's kind of an all-or-nothing situation. So one of the things that I like about using a chorus in a Leslie setting is that you can blend less of the signal and not have it completely overpower your tone. The Keeley Seafoam Plus, the, the trouble with this pedal is it does so many things well, you gotta just settle on one of them. And well, this is the one that I settled on and I think it sounds really cool. <laughs> Last but certainly not least in the chain, we have a delay pedal. This is a Jam Pedals Llama. This is the Mark III. I wanted a nice, warm, uh, slightly modulated delay. This is an analog delay, and it just sounds great. <laughs> So everyone, that is the board. Now this is a, a, a really cool put it together yourself wooden board that I got off of Amazon. I am going to link that below. Also, if you're interested in any of these pedals, I am going to put affiliate links in the description. If you shop through those links, it helps support the channel while you get cool gear at the same time. But this is the board. This is the board that I put together for my Super Reverb, and it really ticks all the boxes for me. It gets all the Super Reverb sounds that I could possibly want. Now, that being said, some of you might say, okay, I'm surprised that you don't have a regular genuine Tube Screamer on there. Obviously, the Lucy Dreamer is a cool pedal. It's, it's a, a tube in the Tube Screamer realm. Why not have a regular Tube Screamer on there? There is one other pedal that is really special to me and special with this amp, and that is an Ibanez TS9. And that one actually has kind of an honorary spot for me as always in my bag with a nine volt battery loaded into it so that if anything happens, I can just plug it in and I know that I can get great tones and be fine. It's kind of like having a, taking your lunch with you or having a blanket with you or something. I don't know, it's some kind of comfort thing, but there have been plenty of gigs where I've just gone out with a Super Reverb and a TS9 with a nine volt and been totally happy. So 
this is not an overly crazy board with too many things going on. It's not really just a modest board either. It's somewhere kind of in the middle. That being said, every so often I do think it's a good thing to just kind of get back to the basics and not worry too much about having all the extra bells and whistles. But let us know, what do you think? What pedals would you have put on a board for a Super Reverb? Did any of these surprise you at uh, how you thought they would sound or did you like the sound? I'm going to play a couple of combinations here to close out. I'm Jack Fawcett. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.